everyone, my name is Melissa and I will be your host for today's game called Are You Smarter Than an Intern? Please give a huge round of applause for today's contestant, Keith! Yes, thank you, thank you, no really, thank you, oh go on, go on, you go on. Welcome Keith, <laughs> we are thrilled you could be here with us today. Why don't you tell the studio audience something interesting about yourself? Well, Melissa, like you said, my name is Keith and I am from Butter Chug, Wyoming, and I love puppies, long walks on the beach. I also like the smell of freshly laundered socks, new leather goods. On the weekends, I enjoy sharpening my skills on the piccolo. I also take pleasure in sketching portraits of fast food menu items wow, such as Keith, french fries. you sure are one, uh... Fascinating guy. Uh, let's get started, shall we? Yes. If you've never seen Are You Smarter Than an Intern before, I will quickly explain the rules. Each contestant, in this case Keith, goes up against a panel of three interns in a mental duel of knowledge and intellect. The contestant will be presented with three trivia questions. Today's questions are related to history. Keith can either answer the question on his own or ask one of the interns for help. Understand? Great. Now we have pre-selected three interns who are willing to come up and serve as panelists for today's challenge. Now let the battle of the brains begin. Question one. <clears throat> <coughs> Actually, Melissa, I won't be needing any help from the intern panel. I don't know if you've noticed, but I'm what many important people consider to be highly ineffectual. Uh, do you mean highly intellectual? That's what I said. Right. Uh, well, Keith, why don't we let them stay, you know, just in case because they've walked all the way up here. Okay, sure, whatever. Just uh, just as long as everyone knows that I do not need any help. I got this thing in the bag. Mm-hmm, great. Okay, well, let's start with question number one. Ready? Keith, when did the U.S. U.S.? I live in the U.S. I love, love, love the U.S. Have you ever been to Colorado? It's a part of the U.S. And it's beautiful. It has mountains and animals oh, and snow. Oh, great. Um, could I please? Get through one question before you interrupt again. Oh, okay, sure, sure, Melissa, go ahead. Okay, okay. like I was saying, when did the U.S. Civil War end? Are you joking? This one's easy. The Civil War ended when it ended, after it was over, and before the war, after it began. <laughs> you're so funny. Oh, oh, you're not, you're not joking. <clears throat> Um, okay, well, I was really looking for the year it ended. Uh, wouldn't you like to see what intern number one thinks? Audience, don't you think Keith should consult his panelists? Melissa, I'm telling you, I really don't need any help. I can rely on my own knowledge to figure this stuff out. But if it makes the audience feel better, I'll allow the panel to express their opinion. Gee, how kind of you. Uh, intern number one, please show us what's on your card. Let's read this together. 1865. Keith, are you sure you wouldn't like to reconsider your response before I tell you the correct answer? No, I'm confident. I'll go with my answer. So sorry, Keith. That is incorrect. 1865 is the year in which the Civil War ended. Maybe you'll have better luck with question number two. Here it comes. Which document explained our reasons for wanting to become a free and independent nation? Okay, okay, I've got this one. Being free and independent is a lot like skydiving, which is a sport. And if anybody knows sports, it's this guy. For example, I'm a baseball expert. You happen to be speaking to the water boy for the Butter Chug, Wyoming's Little League baseball team. One year, I hydrated the entire team of sluggers to the second runners up. With that type of knowledge under my belt, this question is a breeze. The document was a written document that explained our reasons for wanting to become free and independent nation. Well, that's an interesting take on the question. I think this document has an actual name, though. I'll tell you what. Just to be sure, let's ask intern number two his opinion on the topic. Why don't you show us your card? Just to give Keith something to think about. 
His card says the Declaration of Independence. Okay, Keith, I strongly urge you to take into consideration what your panel is telling you. What do you think, audience? Should he go with his answer or with the intern's answer? Um, <coughs> I wasn't finished yet. I, I knew that's what it was called. Who doesn't know about the desperation with interdependence? So, yeah, the intern totally read my mind. Correct. Well, at least halfway. Way to go, panel. Oh, and Keith, too, of course. Uh, we have time for one more question. How many branches are there in the federal government? Oh, I know this one. But uh, just in case, let's see what the intern thinks. Intern number three, we want to give you a chance to talk. So tell us, what is your answer? Good idea. Panelist number three, what do you think? Let's see your card. His card reads three. Right. Just what I was thinking. What that says, final answer. Great job, guys. You're right. That's all the time we have for today, folks. Since you all did so well, everybody gets a prize. Thank you to our interns and to our contestant. Panelists, you may head back to your seats. Audience, please give these knowledgeable scholars a big round of applause. Um, Keith, what's wrong? Well, here's the thing. I know this might come as a shock to you, but I didn't know a single one of those questions. And it's been a while since I studied that stuff in fifth grade. And I thought I could figure it out on my own, but I was wrong. But you know, you actually bring up a good point. Sometimes we're asked a question and we don't know the answer. That's normal and it's a part of learning. There's great information all around us, especially here at school. You could make it a point to learn at least one brand new thing every day and then to build on some things you already know. Like, if you can add one-digit numbers, then you'll soon learn how to add two-digit numbers. And eventually, you'll learn how to do complex algebra. You'll be surprised at how much you will grow in knowledge by learning just one thing at a time. So, you're saying that we should listen to our teachers and really try our best to learn everything that's being taught here at school and other places that we go? That sounds kind of lame. I think you're wrong there. Gaining knowledge is a process of discovering new information and discovering new things. Knowledge is discovering something new so you can be better at whatever you do. Like certain kinds of math can help you at baseball. And people who read a lot understand song lyrics and even jokes on TV shows better. Not to mention, you'll get better grades in school and have more options for your future when you're open to learning every day. Well, that's good news then. That's not lame at all. No. Because I know my ABCs. Well, yeah, the letters of the alphabet are the building blocks of reading, writing, and... and burping all 26 of them in one burp. You want to hear? No! No! <gasps>